Welcome my friend, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode today. I'm doing an ongoing series about passive income for nomads and today I wanted to talk about real estate investments and why I chose Florida for my location in buying rental properties. So I wanna go through three different factors that you should keep in mind with your choice of location for your investment properties. So first, let's talk about why Florida. Back in 2013, I started doing research about where to buy rental properties. So I just went to Google. I asked Google, and the first two or three articles that popped up, uh, I took a look at those. I think one was Money Magazine, the other was AOL, Real Estate, or something like that. They're pretty mainstream sources for information for real estate and investment. And in those articles, I remember one of them listed 20 cities throughout the United States where you could get high return on investment and have high demand for rental properties. So those are a couple of factors to keep in mind if you don't care where your property is located. So return on investment, is the money you invest in it, $100,000, and how much it would rent for, and you would earn minus, say, things like property taxes or state income taxes, stuff like that. So uh, how much money you would earn for your money that is invested. Uh, two of these articles were nearly identical. They listed 20 cities throughout the United States where you had a really good return on investment. And these articles both pointed out eight out of the 20 cities were in central Florida, located from Tampa on the far west coast all the way over to Cocoa Beach on the east coast. So that entire stretch stretching through from Tampa up to Lakeland to Orlando and over to a bunch of little small cities over to Cocoa Beach. So that entire spread there was eight cities at least that were all in that prime area. So it seemed to me that that was a great location. So I wanted to verify it, so I just started doing basic searches online with Realtor.com, which ties into the MLS, the multiple listing service that Realtors use, and Zillow.com, which also has feeds from the MLS, although significantly delayed. So I just started looking in general what properties were selling for and what they were renting for. And I saw all sorts of properties under 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars that were renting for reasonable money. In fact, I started finding properties below 40 and 50 thousand dollars that were for sale and that looked like they could rent for 800 dollars or more. So I put my sights on Florida and decided to sell my property in Colorado and head down to Florida and I came down to Florida, I rented a room month by month in Orlando, decided to get my real estate license, uh, did an online course that took me about a week, then went down and took my license exam, and boom, then I was a licensed realtor, and then I signed up with a real estate broker in the Orlando area, and I just started driving around to all of these various cities and looking at properties. Ultimately, I ended up settling in Lakeland, which is west of Orlando, but east of Tampa, sort of right in the middle and on the freeway. And there was just a lot of foreclosed properties that were available. So all of my properties cost basically $40,000 or less, and they were renting for $800, $850 a month. So this was really a phenomenal return on investment. And so that's how I wound up getting to Florida for my location. So let's talk about today how you should decide where your rental properties are gonna be. One would be convenience. If you're a nomad, how convenient is it for you to reach that destination where your property is? Maybe it doesn't matter if it's going to be in Wyoming or Florida or Texas. Maybe it does. It just depends on how far you're willing to travel. So convenience would be one factor. You can get a higher rate of return usually if you're willing to drive to a further location. Like I'm driving all the way down to Florida, it's less convenient for me, but higher rate of return. So that's factor number one. Number two would be your rate of return. If you're looking at the high rate of return, is it worth it to go that extra distance? For me, I figured yes, it is, because I had a low entry point in the cost of the property and a high rate of return, and I was able to get three properties here. So it was well worth it for me to do that. The last factor you want to look at are things like property taxes, uh, state income tax, 
things like that, the actual expenses that are required to maintain it, as well as factoring in things like a property management company if you're using that. That will be a topic for a later episode about property management companies. Typically, a property management company will want 10% of your rent, and then when they place a new tenant in the property, they want a larger portion. Usually, it's half of the rent for that first month. So those are a few of the factors there. And then of course they would be maintaining the property, doing repairs, and then you get just charged whatever it costs for the handyman or repair service to go out there and do that. So that explains how I chose Florida myself. Doing a search today on Google for best locations in 2019 for real estate investment properties, highest rate of return. I'm not sure what it's gonna come up with. It might say Wyoming, it might say Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, that's something for you to research yourself and then determine if those locations work for you in the scope of your travels for the return on investment. Then from there, you just start doing research on Zillow, Realtor.com, and see what the properties are selling for, if those are properties you can actually afford, and then look at what they typically are renting for, and you can get estimates from those down in the property information. So that gives you a good idea, just sort of a background research before you travel to that area and actually start looking at the properties. It took me about two or three months to find my properties in Florida and get them under contract and get them purchased, and then another three to six weeks to get each of those prepared, painted, repaired, what they call a rehab, and ready to rent. So it is a lengthy process. As I've mentioned before in previous episodes, passive income typically takes a large amount of time in the beginning to get set up, and then after that, a low level of time of maintenance to keep things rolling. So that's all I have for this episode. Feel free to write comments down below. I'll try to answer those if I can, either in the comments there or in future episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future episode.